from this to this. We're in the 80s room, everybody here in the house, and I wanted to make a video today about my DeLorean. That's right, you've already seen the walk around of the car and then how to clean it. And yes, I know some of you had some strong opinions about that video, but we're just gonna leave it at that. What I wanted to do is sort of take you back in time today, no pun intended, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I became infatuated with this car. Now, I had seen the movie as a kid, as I'm sure most of us did when we were younger, and that's how we all got introduced to the car that is the DeLorean. That's how most people were introduced to it anyway. Fast forward a little bit after I had seen the movie. Now, I had seen actual pictures of the car itself without all of the time circuits and all of the fancy gadgets uh, that the car had uh, for the movie. And for some reason, I just fell in love with the car and I knew I had to have that car one day. Obviously, I was a kid, so that wasn't going to happen, even though I begged my parents and talked to them about it. I was like, hey, mom and dad, I got to have a car. I got to have this thing. When I was a kid, I also worked in my family's restaurant. And we owned a pizzeria and we... Um, had delivery guys and there was one delivery guy who was really into cars and he knew that I was infatuated with this this DeLorean. So one day he brought me in this trading card uh, sort of thing. I'm not really sure what it is. It just has some stats on the back. The ring light is giving me problems. He brought this in for me and I was so grateful for this. It was the first time I had something that I could actually hold in my hands. It had something to do with the car. And I found this plastic frame and I had this sitting on my desk 14 years old, and I just found this the other day as I was digging through uh, a bunch of uh, old tubs of stuff that I had, and uh, there it was. So I pulled it out, uh, and it gave me an idea to um, kind of start this video. Now fast forward even a little bit more, having tried to beg my parents for one of these cars, I turned 19 years old. I was getting ready to go to college, and college was four hours away from home, so it was quite a drive. My father gave me the choice. He said, listen, you're 19, you're going away to school. He says, I'm gonna give you a choice. You can either have a DeLorean, which we had found one that was for sale and a reasonable price. And he said, or you can have a Honda Del Sol, which was also another car I had wanted at the time. And I opted for the Honda Del Sol because I was driving four hours away, four hours each way uh, to school. And you know, that was a little bit more practical. So I chose that one and I gave up my dream of owning a DeLorean at least for the time being. Um, I got to college and uh, I happened to be um, in the store one day. Uh, maybe this was after college, I don't remember. Uh, right shortly after, I had run into this puppy right here. This is the Sunstar uh, DeLorean model. Apparently this is worth a lot of money these days. I don't know, I just happened to look on eBay, but uh, yeah, I have one. I've only opened it once and uh, just to look at it and then I put it back in the box and it has been sitting on my shelf ever since. I also acquired uh, a little book here back in the day. Um, this is a DeLorean book here uh, that's called The Gold Portfolio from 1977 to 1995. Um, it's all black and white, has uh, some pictures in there of the car, but I learned uh, most of what I wanted to know about the car from this book. Speaking of books though, um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Brian from the DeLorean Fanatics uh, website. Um, this is the Illustrated Buyer's Guide to DeLorean Automobiles. I probably should have had this before I bought the car. I didn't get it till after. However, this is a really valuable source of information. So Brian, thank you for sending this along. Uh, he chucked this in the mail to me and uh, it was a great read, a fast read. By the way, sidebar, what do you think of the 80s room? Is that something you'd like to see a tour of? Maybe check out what's going on in this room? It's a labor of love. I've put a lot of work into this and it's always a work in progress, but I'm curious if anybody would be interested in um, taking a little walking tour of what's actually in this room. Let me know your thoughts. Put them in the comments below and let me know what you'd like to see. Now, I have all of these things and finally, I got to own my very own DeLorean. I bought it back in October. They held on to it for a few months because they had to do a lot of refurbishment to it and make it up to date and make it a reliable car because I have plans to be driving that thing quite a bit. So I wanted it to be a reliable car. Robert, Tony at DMC Florida, I know I sing your praises all the time, but it's worth it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I love the car uh, and I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So I thought today, uh, instead of doing the outside of it, what's it like to, to ride in a DeLorean? Want to go for a ride? Well, let's jump in the car and go for a ride for a little while, and I'll tell you some things about the car as we go along and give you that perspective of what it's like to actually be inside the car as you're cruising down the road. 
All right, shall we? Let's get this trip underway. Safety first. Always wear your seatbelt. Speaking of safety, that's that's about all DeLorean has as far as uh, safety is concerned. No airbags, nothing like that. They were intended to have airbags. They were going to put them in there. Budget constraints and all that, you know, they were like, eh, we don't need airbags. Seatbelt will be fine. So, is what it is. Let's make it happen. I am in a manual five speed in this DeLorean. They did make them in automatics. Um, and truth be told, I kind of wanted an automatic. But as I understand it, the five speeds are more desirable. And I'm not going to lie, this thing has, as far as the five speed is concerned, it has quite a bit of pep to it. I think there's a misconception out there. People are like, ah, oh, these cars are slow. And no, they're not the fastest cars in the world, but they're also not the slowest. And I think the misconceptions come from people who have never actually driven a DeLorean. But yeah, I think, you know, for the engine that it is, it was a triple effort um, for what he's wanting to do. The triple effort for the engine, uh, Renault, Peugeot, and Volvo came together to make this Frankenstein of an engine. And while it's not the best engine, admittedly, it's not a bad engine either. And uh, they were able to refurbish it and it's still running 40 years later. So, hey, not a bad engine. And again, a lot of these misconceptions that people you know, hear about, oh, it's underpowered. Yeah, it's only 130 horsepower. It's a V6 engine, but you know, like I said, it really, if you're behind the wheel of these, you would never guess that, that was the case. You just drive it and go. There's a ton of traffic. I'm, here I am and having you in the car, and we're not going anywhere. Life in Orlando, folks. All right. Off and running. Shifting is really smooth in this. I know they replaced the clutch for me. Um, so, even so... By today's standards, if you were to get in this car, if you're used to driving a manual five-speed of today's cars, you would get in this thing and try to press on the clutch, and you'd be like, dang, that clutch is heavy, and it is. It's really heavy. And I'm not a big guy. I'm really short. I'm only 5'6", um, so I really got to get down there, and there's a guy in front of me right now he has got his phone out the window taking pictures. That's what happens when you own a DeLorean. Everywhere you go, you're going to see me waving. Maybe a couple of times while we're out and about here today. And that's why, because people love to stop and talk about the car. And you know what? I really do give them the time of day when it comes to that. I was over here at the shopping closet the other day, and the two workers that were in the AT&T store, they completely abandoned the store. Nobody was attending the store. I think people could have ran in there and stole whatever they wanted. They ran out here to see this car. And I let them sit in it and take some pictures and all that good stuff. Because these cars are not normally seen. You know, not everybody has one. They, they weren't prevalent to begin with as far as the numbers. I think they made name, uh, close to just under 9,000 of them. Only about 6,000 are around today. And so you just don't see them that often. Um, I drive mine probably more than most people that own them drive them, but you know, these cars don't do really well sitting. Um, they gotta move and it was made to move. So I love it. It's my primary car. Um, I do share a car with someone else and uh, it's a BMW. So I'm like on super long trips, I'll use that car. But for in town, like just getting wherever I need to go daily, this is my car. I love it. There's a couple things about this car too, as far as height is concerned. Um, I, John DeLorean, the creator of this car, was six foot four, I believe, somewhere around there. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But he was able to fit in this car fine. Now, what happened? There's a couple things. The, the seat reclines quite a bit, and then if you'll see up here. There's this little cutout in the, the headspace here in the headliner uh, for your head to stick through. Now, 
again, I'm only 5'6", so, you know, this really doesn't, I'm sitting pretty upright, and I'm comfortable in here. I've still got room to spare. I mean, I got big hair, but, um, you know, there's that. So, you know, taller guys, I don't know how you all do it. Um, you know, I don't know, you're, you're laying back, and I don't blame you for laying back. By the way, this car is really comfortable. It is, the, my seats were refurbished, but as far as the, like, for a 41-ish year old car, I mean, it is, it is really comfortable. I've been on the highway on this thing, going little jaunts, and put on some tunes, sit back, and this car is just very, very comfortable. So I enjoy being in it. Um, it's not super roomy, um, but that's the thing about this car. Uh, for an older car, again, it's not big. This is a very small car um, in comparison to other cars that were made around that same time. Uh, it's wider uh, than your typical cars these days, just by a smidge. But, you know, not big still by those standards. Um, but, you know, it's, again, a comfortable two people. It's a two-seater, so only two people can fit in here. We're going to make a turn here. I had to stop the camera. You fell over during that turn. But speaking of turning, uh, no power steering in this car. So there's that. Um, but, that said, it's not hard to... It's not hard to steer. If, it's, if the car is standing still... Yeah, it's hard to turn the wheel. But if you are moving, there's no need for power steering. The thing moves just fine. It handles really well. It really grips the road. It's got a wide stance to it. Give you a view outside. stuff to know about it it's kind of a it's kind of a mystery to some people and I know all the DeLorean fanatics out there yeah you know all about this car I know what do you want to learn about this car what can I tell you about it? shoot I'm learning stuff about this car all the time so I still don't know as much as a lot of people do but it's really really fun to learn so put it in the comments below Would you like to see in the video content about this car or retro stuff in general I haven't decided which direction I'm going yet with this but I love retro stuff and hopefully you do too well we made it hope you enjoyed the ride everybody see you around